Welcome to the Silver Sailfish Derby virtual captain's meeting and rules review. Now, in a normal year, we would be gathered inside this historic clubhouse here at the West Palm Beach Fishing Club, but this past year has been anything but normal. This video is intended to give you a cursory review of the tournament rules. A complete list of the rules can be found on our website and in the Derby magazine. Now, check-in is going to be a little bit different this year. Here's how it's going to work. This year, teams can come by the clubhouse on Monday, January 4th, or Tuesday, January 5th, anytime between the hours of 9 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We ask that you call first so that we can have everything together for you. It is mandatory that at least one team member comes by to pick up the boat cooler. This is also when you can buy extra derby t-shirts, purchase Billfish Foundation tags, or enter the Derby Calcutta. Okay, let's dive right into the rules. There are no professional anglers in the Silver Sailfish Derby. Hey, we recognize that professional is defined a lot of different ways in a lot of different tournaments. Here's how we define it. If you've been paid an agreement up front that you're going to get paid to go fish, work in the pit, captain the boat, be an angler in the last 12 months, then you're considered a professional in the Silver Sailfish Derby. We also get questions sometimes, will I deliver yachts for a living? Does that consider me a professional? No, if you're delivering boats, that's one thing. Getting paid to go fishing is the distinction. If you have any questions about this, we'll help you clear it up. Just call the club. Derby boats are required to visually check out each morning before fishing beginning at 6.30 a.m. Our checkout boat will be located inside the inlet with all kinds of flags and banners flying, so they should be easy to see. When you slide by the checkout boat, be sure to show them your boat number. They will audibly verify you on VHF 79 as you go out the chute. Now, if you can't get to the checkout boat before 8 a.m., then check out with us at Sailfish Marina. Fishing times begin at 8 a.m. and conclude at 4 p.m. each day, and you're required to be back at Sailfish Marina no later than 5.30 p.m. to turn in your score sheets and SD cards. The official VHF radio channel of the Derby is 79. If for some reason that channel gets jammed up during the tournament, 80 will be our backup. And on the back side of your boat number, are the cell numbers of the tournament radio committee. I suggest you plug these phone numbers into your cell phone right now so that when it comes time to call in a sailfish release, maybe you're out of VHF radio range and you gotta use the cell phone, those numbers are already in your phone. We're gonna be checking in with radio committee man, Pete Schultz, in just a second, and he's gonna go over exactly how to call in that sailfish release. The northern boundary for the Silver Sailfish Derby is the St. Lucie Power Plant, and our southern boundary is Boca Raton Inlet. Now, you're not allowed to drift across these lines, even if you're fighting a fish. So it's really important, if you're playing those edges, to take wind drift and current into consideration. The Silver Sailfish Derby is a 20-pound test tournament. Now, we know that a lot of monofilament lines over test, but as long as the stated breaking strength on the line that you're using is 20 pound test or less, that's good by us. Could be mono or braid. IGFA allows the use of backing as well, and that can be a heavier material. As long as you have a top shot of at least five meters, that's 16 and a half feet of the 20 pound test line. Now, you're allowed five feet of double line and up to 15 feet of leader. That's a combined length, double line and leader, five feet, 15 feet of 20 feet overall. Only non-stainless steel, non-offset circle hooks are allowed when fishing for sailfish with natural baits, whether they be live or dead. Now Eagle Claw has been a derby sponsor for many years. You actually have some Eagle Claw hooks in your derby boat cooler but you're allowed to use any brand non-offset circle hook you wish. Again, the important part here is that they're not stainless steel 
and their non-offset circle hooks. One of the rules in the Silver Sailfish Derby that helps level the playing field for all participants is that you're limited to only fishing four lines at any one time. Now, you can have all the rods rigged and ready to go you want on the boat, but you can only have four deployed with baits for sailfish at any one time. Oftentimes, those lines are all in kite clips. And sometimes we get the question, hey, are we allowed to pitch a bait to a fish that we see tailing down sea, maybe outside of our spread? The answer to that question is yes, but you have to sacrifice one of the lines that's up in your kite clips. And we don't mean just reeling the bait out of the water. You have to pop it out of the clip and get that bait all the way back in the boat before the next angler can make the pitch to the sailfish. Another question we get oftentimes is, can we catch bait while we're fishing? The answer to that question too is yes, but again, you have to sacrifice one of the four rods that you have out in the water. And also, you're not allowed to catch any eligible species in the derby on multiple bait hook rigs. Another question we often get is, can we set our kites prior to lines in the water? And the answer is yes. You can even go so far as to set your lines in the kite clips as long as the baits stay in the boat. This way you're all ready to go when the stroke of 8 a.m. comes and it's lines in the water. The important distinction here is though, you've got to keep those baits in the boat prior to the start of tournament fishing at 8 a.m. You're allowed to use any type of live bait, dead bait, or even artificial bait when fishing for sailfish in the derby. There is no score distinction between fish caught on these different baits. Also, we do not allow chumming with live or dead bait. In fact, we take it so far that you must retain your spent baits during the course of fishing. That way, other boats won't see you tossing baits over and think you are chumming. Speaking of baits in the water, we do not allow the use of any natural bait dredges or teasers. Now you are allowed to use artificial ones like strip mylar teasers, maybe squid chains or other lures. Just no natural baits on these rigs. Anyone on the boat can set the kites, cast out baits, adjust the lines, but once a fish gets in the spread, it's time for the designated angler to take over. There is no hooking and handing off in the Silver Sailfish Derby. Whoever hooks the fish, fights the fish. Speaking of fighting fish, one exception to IGFA rules that we allow is fighting multiple fish from the covering board or a rod holder. We allow this because we have individual angler awards and we like to see those anglers catch as many fish as they can. This is a leader touch tournament. Tipping the leader or cork does not count. So for your sailfish to be considered an official release, the leader has to be physically touched by a member of your team. Once the leader, not the double line, is touched, that fish is caught. If possible, try to cut the line as close to the fish's mouth as you can. We know that's not always possible, but please try. And obviously, if you're able to physically bill the fish, that counts as a release as well. A couple other things to address here. Once the leader touch has been made, that is considered a released fish, even if it takes another run away from the boat. A different person can handle the rod at that point if needed. However, you still have to disconnect from the fish before you can deploy another bait. Also, in case you haven't heard, we have been experiencing a serious shark depredation problem. So to be clear on this, if a fish is bit or mutilated prior to a successful release, that fish will not count. Of course, we all hope we don't see a lot of that. Now it's time to check in with the official voice of the Silver Sailfish Derby, Pete Schultz at Fishing Headquarters up in Jupiter, where our tournament radio committee is based. Pete's going to give us the details on how you radio in or call in a sailfish release. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the West Palm Beach Fishing Club's 83rd Annual Silver Sailfish Derby. It is officially 8 o'clock. Lines in. Everyone, lines in. Good luck today.
So it's really important that the first thing we hear is either the boat name or the boat number and then the angler. So a lot of times uh, the best thing to do is call and say boat 27, one fish for Dave right now. On the back of your sheet, on your boat number, it tells you exactly what the phone numbers are to get a hold of us, right? So if you can't get a hold of us through the radio, we don't hear you, um, then you can call us on the cell phone to make sure that we heard about your fish. You know, tag, no tag, it's great to know. Like we put it right here on the sheet. If someone calls in and uh, they've tagged a fish, we put down that it was tagged. And sometimes you don't know that it's tagged until you try to get the tag after you already caught the fish, right? It could be five minutes before you get the tag in. You can put it on your sheet and then you can call us later and let us know that it's been tagged. If you have a double header on, just call in the one fish that you caught. That's really the most important thing. And then if I acknowledge you, that means that I got it, okay? Because sometimes it gets really hectic on the radio. I'll call you back and say, hey, boat 17, uh, you're one fish for Dave. Here's your time. You know, so I'll get back to you when I can because sometimes it gets really busy. But just call in with your name and your number or your, the angler name and the boat number is the most important thing. The time that I give you is the official time. You have to make sure that you communicate with the radio crew as to when you release the fish because our time could be a tiebreaker. So make sure that you get a hold of us and use our time. On the radio, it's really nice, but sometimes it gets kind of crazy. You have to use the cell phone. That was great, Pete. Thank you so much for being the voice of the Derby all these years. Okay, now it's time to check in with Buzz and he's gonna give you the details on how to properly document your sailfish releases on video. Let's talk about how to record a sailfish release. Like many tournaments today, sailfish releases are confirmed via video confirmation in the Silver Sailfish Derby. Here's how the requirement reads on the tournament rules. All sailfish releases must be verified in a continuous video footage sequence from the time video evidence confirms identification of the sailfish until the leader is touched and then cut at the time of release. This continuous video must clearly identify the fish, as well as the touching of the leader by a crew member. If a break in footage should occur, the team must reestablish video evidence of the fish, again with a continuous video sequence, up to the leader cut and leader separation. Upon separating the fish from the leader, the proper release card must be displayed on video to mark the completion of the catch. This really helps us organize large video files and find the release when scrolling through those. Each team will be issued two release cards, one for day one and another one for day two. Each team is responsible for providing their own camera and the appropriate media to record footage. SD cards are the only acceptable format and of course micro SD which you'll find in a standard GoPro. We'll collect the SD cards at the end of each fishing day along with your score sheet. In your captain's buckets you'll find these little Ziploc bags. These are a great way to keep your SD cards organized and safe at the end of the day. So simply put, in a continuous video sequence, one, clearly identify a sailfish, two, grab the leader to make the release official, and three, show us that release card once the fish has been separated from the leader. Lastly, here's just a few of my best video practices. Communicate with us. It really helps to verbally announce who the angler is fighting the fish, and it's even more helpful to announce what number fish that is for your day of fishing. Next up here, film the fish, not the angler. Keep that camera pointed at the end of the line, not at the angler in the cockpit. You want to catch that fish jumping and clearly identify that sailfish. Hey, and lastly, come prepared. Don't go offshore with just one camera and a half charge battery. Bring sufficient SD cards. It's just one more preparation in tournament fishing. Thanks, Buzz. Now let's talk about how to fill out and turn in your daily score sheets. Derby score sheets are located in your Derby coolers. It's really helpful to pre-fill these out before heading offshore. These are the sheets that you're going to turn in with your SD cards at the end of each fishing day. Prior to turning in your score sheet at the end of the day, double check and make sure you have indicated the proper number of overall sailfish releases and the number of sailfish that you tagged during that fishing day. Hey, it really helps us if you fly the Silver Sailfish Derby Burgee as well. That way our volunteers can identify you as a tournament boat when we try to get your score sheets and SD cards. If you have an eligible fish for the meat fish category, you'll need to bring it to our tournament scale. 
This year, the scale is located across from the Tiki Bar on the south end of the marina property. We have five eligible species, kingfish, dolphin, wahoo, tuna, and cobia. The heaviest of one of those five fish will win an award each day. And remember, not every boat in the Derby is in the Meatfish Calcutta, so it pays sometimes to weigh even the smallest of fish. One of the most viewed pages on our club website each year is the Derby Live Scoring page. You can see an up-to-date fleet list on this page, and once the tournament begins, you can watch all the action unfold. There are lots of ways to win awards in the Silver Sailfish Derby. We have tournament awards for both individual anglers and teams. The famous Ray Trophy goes to the top individual. Other awards include beautiful crystal trophies, marine artwork, fishing gear, and even some adult beverages. In fact, you don't even have to be good to win a Derby Award, just a little lucky. Finally, we would like to say thank you for fishing the Silver Sailfish Derby. We always say we're a lot more than just a fishing club around here and your participation in the Derby helps support a lot of our community initiatives like building reefs, planting mangroves, and taking kids fishing. If you're not a member of the West Palm Beach Fishing Club, we encourage you to join. Just visit our website. You can join online. Finally, the Silver Sailfish Derby does not exist without the support of our many sponsors. These companies provide financial support, provide awards and tournament giveaways, and help us with a lot of logistical assistance. So we could not do it without them. It takes a team effort to pull this event off, and we are really glad they are on the team. Again, thank you for fishing the world's oldest sailfish tournament and helping us continue this wonderful sport fishing tradition. Be safe and good luck.